Now, as well as writing pages and drawing pages, uh, Notebook also supports outlines or note pages. So let's just uh, move this in so it doesn't distract us too much. And let's create a new outlining page or notes page. I will give it a name. Now, if you are going to create a to-do list, outline pages are the best way to go. So just hit return. And now we can type the new cells text, press return to end editing, and again to create a new cell. Now, a cell is basically just a line within your outline. Now, an outline is basically a structured list. So let me just create a few lines of text that we can arrange into a to-do list. Now, my first line is going to be tasks for home, and then we'll hit return. In fact, hit return twice. And then we get another info flag just reminding us to press the tab key to indent a cell. So what I'm going to do, just press tab, and then uh, write a few tasks down. One particular tip if you're entering a lot of cells or a lot of lines within your outline is to go to the outline menu and switch on list mode. And this just enables you to uh, move up to the next line by hitting a single return rather than hitting return twice. And now I'm going to create a new entry tasks for work. Now, because this is going to be a sort of like a top level heading, I'm going to press shift and tab and that will take the indent off. And you'll see the tasks for home has got the downward pointing arrow and four entries and then tasks for work has just got the uh, the blue circle. So again, if I move to the next line, press tab. And now the entries I create under tasks for work sort of belong to that particular category. So let me just enter a few more lines in. Okay, so there's our basic outline. And we have controls now, so we can collapse those particular tasks under these headings and expand them again. Uh, we can do things like grabbing them and reordering them. So I can change the priority of them. I can do things such as sort the tasks. So if I right click on here, say sort children, say alphabetize, that will sort everything into alphabetical order. Now the problem is if I now add a new entry, you'll see that's now out of order, but I can switch on a thing called auto sort. So if we go to here, say sort children, auto sort, that creates this thing called a sticker in the side margin. If I now click on that sticker, Currently says auto sorting off, but I say alphabetize, and there we go. That's put everything in order. And if I put a new entry in, and that will sort things for us automatically. Now, another option not specifically connected with outlining or with to-do lists is you can also highlight words or sentences. So if I wanted to highlight feed the cats, I can just say edit, highlight, and then use any of these six different colors. Let's say I want to select the purple color, and say add, and that will put a, a highlight on those particular words. And you'll see later there's an index within the multidex for highlighted pieces of text. Other ways we can annotate cells. Uh, for instance, here I've got an option to phone Lisa, so I can go to my address book. I can just grab Lisa's details, take that across, drop it on that particular cell. And now we have another sticker to show that we have some contact information. I can right or control click on the sticker, and that gives me direct access to uh, the information stored within the address book. Uh, for instance, click on the email entry, and that creates this brand new message already addressed to Lisa. Now, outlines are very powerful, and you can use them for all sorts of purposes. But in this particular case, we're using it as a to-do list. So it would be nice to have a checkbox against each task that we could just check off when we complete something. And again, you can do that within Notebook. All you need to do, for instance, say, if we look at this advertise for a butler, if we right or control click, say add status checkbox, we now have this checkbox that uh, once we've completed the action, we can click. Uh, let's do that for the clean the fridge option as well. So right or control click, add status checkbox. Now, another option within to-do lists that can be quite useful is to assign dates to them, either due dates or start dates. Uh, again, supported within Notebook, if we go to view, and we'll say view due dates, You'll see we now get a new column at the side. If I wanted to put a new due date for, say, clean the fridge, I would just click on there. There is actually now a pop-up which enables us to select a date. So if we say Friday the 12th of September, we'll say set. That's now got a due date. Now let's just say we've completed the advertise for a butler task. And now we can also look at the other dates, such as the due date, the completed date, the created date, and the change. And you'll notice if we look at the completed date, Advertise for a Butler is completed today. Now, some other options you can do with uh, dates and tasks. If we go into Notebook Preferences uh, and under To-Do Items, right, we can color the text of completed items. So that's now grayed out. And you'll see, as soon as I did that, the completed item 
completed to-do item advertised for a butler has become gray. Uh, we can color items due within three days. And again, because clean the fridge, we've set up a due date. I just go back there to the 12th of the 9th. Uh, it's now gone orange because it's due within three days. And you'll also notice that the completed item, the text has been struck through because of this setting here. And then we could also as well, if we wanted to hide completed items, uh, so they disappear from our view completely. Now, if you have allocated due dates to tasks within a to-do list, you can sync those actions to iCal or even to Entourage as well if you want. And by default, items with a due date appear as calendar events when we sync with iCal. Now, not strictly connected with to-do lists, but just another type of entry you can place on any type of page is a voice annotation. Now, the easiest way to do that is to go back into View and Customize Toolbar. And you'll see there's an option in here for voice annotation. So we'll just drag that onto the toolbar, say done. And now if we want to create a new entry, uh, we'll just hit return and say voice annotation. Now this is using the same microphone as I'm using to record the screencast, but uh, basically all we need to do is just hit start recording. Now you can export these uh, voice annotations across to iTunes. So you might want to put in some information within the iTunes info boxes. But what I'll do is I'll just uh, do a quick recording. Must remember to get the milk from the grocers. Okay, and there we go. Voice annotation recorded on today's date. And if I just click that, must remember to get the milk from the grocers. Now, I didn't need to create this cell here, so I'll just delete that cell. Uh, control click on the sticker and we've got some further controls we can play. We can change the playback start time so it can start the playback from a different point in time within the clip. Uh, we can also show the control clip, open in iTunes, or open with any of our other audio software on our machine. Now, if you do open your audio clip within iTunes, obviously you can then synchronize that with an iPod if you want to take that away with you. Uh, the show control strip just provides you with a playback device so that you can actually play the annotation directly from the cell itself.